Thank you for, for the opportunity to speak. Unfortunately, my Italian isn't quite as good as it should be, so I apologize. And uh, uh, basically, what I would like to talk about essentially is that we are living in a period of change. The world has changed substantially. We're living in a new reality, a reality which is, which is uh, influenced also by a certain sense of lack of reality. I'm starting this with a, with a, with a uh, cheery little slide. Uh, and the reason for that is to remind you that we're coming from a period of extraordinary disruption, a period of extraordinary uh, change in our financial system. The four horsemen of the financial apocalypse, and we almost lived through a financial apocalypse, I've just tried to summarize them there. It's too much leverage, too much short-term thinking, lack of transparency, and excessive greed. You had all of those in 2006, 2007, and then the explosion of 2008. You know, history does repeat itself in finance. Almost every 10 years, you'll see some manifestation of some of these characteristics, and very often a combination of them. We are living in a world of experimentation. Janet Yellen, the woman who runs the Federal Reserve now in the United States, said that quantitative easing is the greatest experiment in monetary thinking in recorded history. We don't know what the future brings. We don't know if quantitative easing will lead us to a Japanese environment of a longer term period of stagnation once quantitative easing subsides and disappears, we cannot forever continue to print dollar bills or yen or sterling or whatever. The other experiment is the one of the euro. Currency unions historically have rarely succeeded. Hopefully this one will, but at a fair amount of cost. You experience this cost in your daily lives. But the experiment is not over. We do not know what the longer term consequences are. Thirdly, you know, we have this absolutely extraordinary situation where we are living in 19th century capitalism, where workers have zero protection. They're exploited totally in a country which is communist. This is Manchester of the 19th century in a communist country. How that one works out, nobody knows. So all I want to point out here is that we're living in a world that is very different from a world that we knew before or that has historical precedents. Just to, you know, highlight the point that this is a brave new world and we have to think differently. We just cannot continue to think the way we have traditionally done so perhaps in the post-war years as we are uh, adjusting now to a very different reality. There was a previous slide that talked about declining interest rates. 
Again, we are going to be living in a new world. For 30 years, we have had a period of declining interest rates. You know, uh, in 1983, I bought 10-year treasuries for my deceased mother at 16%. They went from 16% to 1.5%. That downwards trend in interest rates, be it in the United States or in other countries, I believe is now over. Unfortunately, I can't tell you exactly when a specific level will be hit. I can't predict short-term movements, but I certainly do feel that that downward trend is finished. So we are faced with a brave new world, I think, also of interest rate trends. Just a little slide to remind you, those of you who like, the, who like history, that there were banks in Italy that uh, lost, what went bankrupt, basically, uh, in financing governments. There were obviously very much smaller entities but uh, there were banks, uh, you know, the Medici's, the Peruzzi's, the Valdi's, that did finance Italian sovereigns. But it also happened in many other countries. I'm not implying that Italy will default, but that there are risks. You know, it was, what, 15 years ago, a little more, that Russia defaulted. You know, I'm always terribly amused by... Uh, banking regulators trying to come up with risk models for banks and try to understand risk. Some of the most recent models, and therefore I brought this up, to test out the models, they gave it to a whole select group of banks to understand risk. And in any one risk category, the variations of the models were 800%. That is, one bank valued risk at one, and the other valued up to eight. So you have tremendous differences in how risk is valued on the books of the banks. In other words, you know, we just do have to be careful in risk models developed by individual banks. You know, in the end, life is, you know, in our economies is fairly simple. You've got to work more to be able to produce something which has value. And you control inflation and you create value, you create growth through productivity. <laughs> One thing I've learned in my brief history in finance is when every economist tells you not to worry, that's when I start worrying. And everybody tells you, you know, not to worry about inflation. Well, inflation happens is when you have a decline in productivity. You're printing money, but you're not producing more. And for the first time in a very long time, We've had a worldwide decline in productivity. Now, I'm not here to try to predict the future. I'm just trying to make you aware of certain things that are going on around us. I also worry about what's happening in the financial markets because of quantitative easing. When money is cheap, it distorts financial reality. And you're starting to see that in the equity markets. You are in a period of speculation, which is starting to resemble the late 1990s. You remember the TMT crisis, the telecom media crisis? You're starting to see similar valuation excesses. And these are just a few of the examples that highlight that. 
you know, one of the things we all have to be mindful of in finance is humility, stay humble. None of us can predict the future. There are three very well-known professors of finance who have written books that spend their lives trying to understand market trends. There's Professor Schiller from Yale. He thinks equity markets, particularly in the United States, but equity markets in general, are much too expensive. In other words, that markets will trend downwards in the coming years. Professor Siegel from Wharton, who's an optimist, he thinks equity markets will go up. You get value there and that the trend will be upwards. Then there are three professors from the London Business School who have also written books, gone back 100 years. They think the markets will essentially be flat, about 3, 3.5% three growth. In other words, you have three very well-known scholars, probably the best-known scholars in finance, and they all have different opinions about the equity markets. So in other words, who knows? You know, I just want to again point out we're in a new world. The United States has been an isle of st relative stability, off and on, but a little safer haven than most places. There are obviously problems. I think you will agree with the statement here. There's, uh, you know, you read the press that there, is, there, are, uh, there are significant difficulties. But look when that was written over a hundred years ago. So in certain ways, certain things stay the same. But still, the format is different. We are in a period of substantive change. The United States has a huge debt problem. Not just the federal government, but the individual states. I'm sure you've read about them. But many of our largest states in the United States are virtually bankrupt. We also have a huge debt overhang, and it's not just Italy. You know, there we can talk about the comparisons between Italy and the United States, but this is in common with many other countries. We live in a democracy uh, where the politics, short-term politics, predominate. People do not vote for pain. It's very difficult to get people excited by taking things away from them. So you give them things. That's how you gain votes. And you do that by borrowing more and more so you can give them more and more. But at some point, you just cannot keep borrowing more. So that's the drama in which we live. What is the solution? Obviously, you know, we can have endless discussions about that. Now, just to say, you know, uh, to continue on the theme, we're living in a new world. This country, as well as many other countries, but particularly Italy and to a large extent the United States, the strength of our economies is based on smaller, medium-sized companies. Between 30 and 40 percent of GDP comes from smaller companies. As you know, the banking system is, has gone through a period of crisis and is still in a period of tremendous change and adapt, trying to adapt to a new environment. The policies of quantitative easing and trying to save the financial system have led to a period where banks have cut back significantly in corporate lending and particularly in lending to small and medium-sized companies. This has led to, I think, the creation of a certain 
possibility of creating an environment which is new, which is dynamic, which can help companies have an alternative to traditional bank financing. Bank financing has been very, very difficult, if not impossible, to obtain in the crisis of 2008 and the subsequent years. So what we're trying to do in putting together our initiative to invest in small, medium-sized companies is to offer a capital markets alternative, something which is important for everybody, I think important for for the country, important for the uh, growth of the economy. Companies, mid-sized mid companies will be able to access capital through another channel, not be totally dependent on the banking, uh, on the banking uh, uh, group that's, you know, the, the, their banks which have been the typical source of financing over the years will be able to offer financing on terms and conditions which are different from the banks. Different being longer maturities, structured differently, where we can participate in the growth of businesses. So we will work in partnership with the banks. We're not here to replace them, but to add additional sources of capital to finance growth. It is absolutely essential that companies start thinking in a also capital markets basis to get the discipline, which is, uh, I think, crucial in order to seed in a increasingly international and global environment. And capital markets discipline, I think, is a part of that process. For investors, it also offers, I think, just a very compelling opportunity. You know, what we always try to do is get good returns with as low volatility. So here is an opportunity to hopefully get attractive returns with hopefully no volatility. It will also help investors protect against inflation because we will lend largely on a floating rate basis. You know, the markets, the one thing I really do worry about the markets also is a lack of trading volatility. The banks are no longer making markets. Basel III, the capital constraints, have had an effect on banks' ability to make markets. So what you will see is more and more volatility in the capital markets. Here we will be doing private placements, so therefore not subject to volatility. Unfortunately, you know, we can try to get you good returns and we can try to get you no volatility, but we cannot give you liquidity. So the cost of this is that you subscribe to a vehicle that is going to be an investment of five to seven years. But what I just do want to highlight again, this is a fresh, I think, new dynamic that is important, I think, for all different members of economic society and for society as a whole. <laughs> and we're delighted that we can try to pay a role. We have closed on our first little tranche in uh, supporting Italian small and medium-sized companies. We've done so with 156 euros. We will be uh, doing a second tranche, which we hope to close in a, uh, hopefully uh, within a few months. The idea is to make this a substantial contribution to Italian middle market companies and to society as a whole. We have made a strong commitment. We have been working on this for many years. 
and we have established an office in Milan and a staff with, we think, highly competent professionals. We thank you for the opportunity and look forward to uh, participating with you in the uh, growth in Italy and in the middle markets. Thank you.